Hey guys, and welcome to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sim. We played Dark Souls 1 a long time ago, the Prepare to Die edition, and that was a grand old time, and now we're going to play Dark Souls 2. With a slight difference this time though, because while I knew everything about Dark Souls 1, I have not played Scholar of the First Sim before. I've played Dark Souls 2 though, so there will be quite a few things I don't know this time, more specifically where every single enemy is, that being the main difference in Scholar of the First Sim. Plus some extra NPCs. You will lose everything once granted. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drangnik. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. to a flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the curse.
and here we are. So to sum up the opening cutscene in more sensible terms, we're undead, much like in the first game, and we've come to Drang Lake to try and find a cure for, un for being undead, because that worked so well for the chosen undead in the first game. But, um... You never. It's, it's. But you might say to yourself, from Dark Souls One, of course, had two endings, and which one of those would be canon? You might ask yourself, and the answer is both. But we'll we'll see more about that later. For now, we need to go and talk to some old crones in here. And now we actually get to make our character, because you might have noticed we didn't earlier. Now, when we played Dark Souls 1, we were a bald man named Alan. So, in the fair, so, in an attempt to be fair, this time we will be a woman named Jennifer. Yes. Could have fooled me, didn't look much like anything to me. So, gender, female. And we don't care much about this, because we won't, the, the actual face, because of course we won't be seeing it for most of the game. But, we'll do something interesting, we'll have bright pink hair. There we go. And you can pick your starting class again. You can't start as a pyromancer this time. You can get pyromancy much later in the game, but it's been greatly, greatly nerfed. But we will be starting as a swordsman this time around. And the gift doesn't really matter that much, in all honesty. But we will start with a petrified something, because we can use that to get an item fairly early on. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. You never know. <laughs> Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> 
What lovely old women they were. Now I'm gonna steal from them. We're gonna come up here. And don't worry, we're the hero of the story, so that means we get to steal everything without fear of repercussions. I've seen The Legend of Zelda games, I know how it works. And now we're just gonna walk off. Bonfires, much like the first game, checkpoints. And this over here, I believe, unless it's changed, is a torch. Yes. That was something else I heard Scholar of this first sin change, is the world's supposed to be a lot darker. But I've got the brightness on, like, maximum, so it probably won't come across as that way, since YouTube makes everything super dark. So this is basically just the tutorial area. These little headstones tell you what to do. And we just go around, stab up some men. Good times. Now you might notice, we've not started with the shield this time. No, in fact, Dark Souls 2, it's a while before you can actually get a decent shield. But at the same time, it's a lot easier to not use a shield at the same time. You can even dual wield weapons with a reason now. Because of, they added something called Power Stance. And basically what that is, is every weapon has a stat requirement. So supposing I need 10 strength to use a weapon. If I have 150% of the base requirement, so 15, I can then dual wield the weapons and gain extra attacks for it. Which we'll look into later. But for now, we are a lowly swordsman who does not have very many stats at all, except dexterity. We're overflowing with dexterity. Which, of course, is my style. That was how I went through the first game. That's how we'll go through this one as well, with swords and dexterity. Like the filthy scrub I am. So, things betwixt. Not terribly exciting. Just going around, stabbing some lots of nasty men. You also might have noticed that we didn't start with an Estus Flask. And that's because Dark Souls 2, the adventurous game that it is, tried something different. Wait, wait, one second. Now, the reason we started with the petrified something was because you can leave it here. Yes. And the birds give us a demon's great hammer in exchange. You can get a few items from them, but we got the demon's great item. De the demon great hammer. And... If I'm not mistaken, it takes something obscene, like 50 strength. Yeah, it takes 50 strength, so, you know, we have it. But we won't be using it for a very long time. So, um, what was I saying? Something or other. It'll come to me, eventually. And this is different. There is a statue blocking our way. There's a few statues like this in the game, and you present them with a fragrant ban branch of fragrant branch of yore, and you can get them out, you can basically, they're petrified people, you'll unpetrify them, and then you can pass through. He's not there in the original game. And we can go up around and see what's behind the statue, because I have played like the first few minutes of the game to make sure it worked. And um, if you remember the basilisks from the first game, you'll be seeing them soon enough. The jumping's different. Also, much easier, if you ask me. A lot of people are upset, but the way you used to jump was you would sprint and then release and tap the sprint again to jump, and now you just click in the left thumbstick. It's a lot less awkward, but a lot of people didn't like it. I don't understand it. Bet he's surprised. So yes, things betwixt. It's not very exciting. We're mostly just filling space right now, but it's very short. It's very short. Soon we'll be going out into the hub of the actual world, Majula. Which is our Firelink Shrine equivalent for the game. Just go over here. Have a peek in. Yep, Basilisk's over there. A few of them. They're just as horrible as ever. 
We can add, those are not their eyes, by the way, and uh, those big things on the front of their face. Those are supposedly to just intimidate people and are not their actual eyes. There are a few varieties later we can see that don't have those big things on their face and they're much less horrifying. Because they just, they freak me out, man, those eyes. Lots of lovely messages are usually here, praise the sun. Some people like to go in the corner and put a secret passage there, and say there's a secret passage there. There isn't. And this is Majula, the hub of the actual world. Lots of people like to jump to their death here. See? Oh, there they go. Yep. And then they died. As you might have guessed. Is this still a divine blessing? Yes, it is. And the divine blessing is a full heal which we will, a full heal item, which we will probably never use in our entire lives. Now there are, f there are a few NPCs here already. We'll go around and talk to them all. After we light the bonfire. First we will go speak to the most important person here, the Emerald Herald. Are you the next martyr? Or merely a pawn of fate? Bearer of the curse. Oh, thank you. Go on and see the king. He who made Drang Lake what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Bearer of the curse, seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Seek those whose names are unutterable, the four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, return here to me, so that hope will not fade away. Bearer of the curse, seek souls, larger, more powerful. So, we can level up at the Emerald Herald like we would bonfires previously. We have to come back to the Emerald Herald now, but we can just teleport between bonfires so it's much easier. And she will upgrade our Estus Flask and we can talk to her. And, and yes, 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 that's enough of that. So we have the Estus Flask now, but the Estus Flask, this time, we start off with only one charge of it. And the reason being that we have to find Estus Shards to upgrade over time, and then we can have more charges of it, because Dark Souls 2 wanted to try something new. That's why we have these Life Gems, which slowly heal you over time. And later we can just buy, like, 99 of them from an NPC and never worry about healing again, basically.
Somebody's gone and blocked the door. If only there was some other way to get in other than the door. But alas, there clearly is not. Do not worry, blacksmith. We will find you the key. And there are two... Nope, there are three more people we can go talk to. I'm walking away from one of them. You might remember the crestfallen warrior from the first game. Well, he's here again in spirit with this man up here. or no supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth, that's the real curse right there. We undead will never die. And that's quite a predicament. All beings in this land with giant souls. And wherever you go from here, you will sooner or later come up against them. Each has a powerful soul and a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. You're such a Debbie Downer man. Have you ever cry out for help? The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You will face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. Sure, I will join the way of the blue. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the blue sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the sentinels cradle you in their embrace. So basically, he gave us a ring. This ring. And if we get invaded, what it'll do is it'll try and find someone in another coven called the Blue Sentinels to come and help, basically. And this is how many people have died total worldwide. That's a lot of people. Most of them probably jumping to their deaths here. Surprisingly, none of them said try jumping. So now we're just going to go around and talk to everyone else. There's two NPCs left to talk to. So to summarize what everyone's telling us as well, if you remember the first game, we had to go around and collect four Lord Souls. We basically have to do that again. We have to go around, we have to beat up four big nasty people, and then when we've got their souls, we come back to the Emerald Herald, and then we're going to go off to find the king. And hopefully find a curse for the uh, cure for the undead. But, you know, Dark Souls, bleak game. 
how well that's going to go. We'll see. Also, this is an Estes flask shard. Don't ask me why the man was in the well. I don't know who put him in the well. But, you know, he must have done something to deserve it, surely. Hello, cat. And we won't exhaust her dialogue just so that we actually, like, do something today. We'll talk to her later. She sells a bunch of rings. This one we'll want to buy later. But she sells some stuff, some consumables that we'll never buy. And you can abandon your covenant here. And now we will go speak to the last gentleman here. Don't fall in the pit, by the way, until later anyway. We do have to go down there. And over here is the last person. Uh, oh. Oh, hello there. Welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morley. And, uh, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. I could really the business if you'd be so kind he's a nice guy he sells armor we'll come back and buy some armor later though because right now we are woefully poor you don't mind if I steal your stuff do you thanks thanks bro come up here and there's a chest what's in the chest I think it's a human effigy? No, it's a Titanite shard, which we use to upgrade. But of course, the blacksmith is in quite the pickle. He can't get into his workshop because, of course, the door's locked and there's no other possible way to get in. So we have to find him his key. Now from here, there's two ways we can go. We can go over there, which leads to Hyde's Tower of Flame. Well, we're not going to do that yet. No, sorry. We're going to instead go to the forest down this way instead. And we're going to hang out with some hollow dudes and some other stuff, probably. Because, of course, Scholar of the First Sin has changed a bunch of enemies. The one I know about is there's a river down there with a very big ogre in it that we don't want to trifle with. But we'll see. We'll see. We're going to see together because I know vaguely where everything is, but not for certain anymore. It's going to be a new experience. <laughs> 